Hey, Ken Rolla, FreshAndAlive.com, and I uh, wanted to tell you a little trick that I found with using our 10-inch skater disc. Uh, it's interesting, I originally developed these discs for improving fermentation. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar or haven't seen these before, what this thing is, basically, it's my version of Organite. Um, I make it very differently than what most people do. Uh, if you look at this, there's a lot of crystals in it. There's a lot of uh, stones and gems in it and very, very fine particles of stuff. I don't use metal shavings. I don't use big chunks of big particles of metal shavings and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, there, there are talks I've done online about how, orga how Organite works and how these things work. And actually, it's on my website on the disks page. If you go to freshandalive.com and you look at the skater disk, it explains the physics of how these things work. So I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to give you kind of a quick tip on how to use these things for fermentation. Because, as I said, I developed this for putting underneath a five-gallon fermentation bucket um, when I was doing ferments like uh, affected microorganisms or um, other kinds of brews, including kombucha. And um, it improves the yields on them because this, the field that this thing is putting out, um, it's a subtle energy field that the military and some scientists are calling skater waves and skater fields. It's gone by other names throughout time. Some people call it orgone. Some people call it tachyon energy. Some people call it prana or chi or whatever. But it's this superluminal light energy. And it's very beneficial at the right frequencies to living beings and living organisms, including microbes, plants, animals, everything. Um, so these discs use natural minerals like amethyst and kyanite and selenite and quartz and like 12 other mineral powders that put out natural frequencies that are harmonious to living organisms. And so, um, so anyway, you know, I designed this thing for fermentation. I stick it under my brew buckets. And I had, uh, interestingly enough, you know, I use it when I brew stuff. I brew it for anywhere from 10 days to four or five months, sometimes more if I'm doing a multi-stage ferment that's more sophisticated. Sometimes I might take a ferment and take like, so let's say, I'll give you an example. I made a brew a couple years ago where um, I put 23 different herbs, um, rock powders like azomite, rhyolite, also known as Jersey green sand, um, uh, Redmond minerals, uh, a whole slew of stuff, a little bit of uh, well, shilajit and um, a whole ton of stuff in there, blue-green algae, and basically fermented it for about three or four months until it was ready. And you can tell when it's ready because the pH, you're basically making a kind of a vinegar, and so the pH will drop as you're fermenting the sugars, as the sugars get converted into, um, into um, acid the pH will drop. And so when the pH stops dropping, you know when it's done. So in the case of that brew, it took about four months. And, um, and I was doing that in a skater field. I had it sitting on a skater disc. And I also had, uh, had it in a container where the whole thing was surrounded by about an inch of magnetite sand. And magnetite puts out a magnetic field, a natural magnetic field. And it also puts out skater waves as well and infrared. And I also had some um, Shungite powder mixed into it as well. Shungite puts out skater fields in infrared as well. And so anyway, it you know brewed the stuff for a few months and it um, got done and it was really very interesting brew. But then I thought, I'm gonna kick it up a notch. And so then I used a different culture. I actually got a water kefir culture and I mixed in some uh, uh, freeze dried cane sugar and the water kefir culture and fermented that for a few weeks and also threw in some other ingredients. I think in that case I, was, I threw in fruit. And so I think it was blueberries and watermelon and stuff. So the water kefir grains ate the fruits and gobbled everything up and it added to the nutrient profile of the brew and wound up with this really interesting um, and kind of tasty. It, it, Tasted, I would say it didn't taste good, but it didn't taste bad. <laughs> it was doable. But anyway, so I've, you know, I've done a lot of these kinds of advanced multi-stage ferments and things with different cultures, different ingredients, skater fields, magnetic fields, et cetera, et cetera. And those are some of the things I teach. 
So normally I get done with that and I bottle the stuff up and I'm done with it, bada bing, bada boom, no big deal. Well, my, one of my employees gave me a kombucha mushroom because mine had all died. I got some really nice ones from Russia. Um, but you know, I get busy traveling and stuff, let them go and, um, and they would get moldy and, and die, right? So, and in, in those days I wasn't using the skater disc underneath my kombucha. And so um, it was actually one of my employees who gave me another culture and she said, um, she said, well, I, I keep the mushroom on a skater disc and it never molds if you do that, right? So this kombucha mushroom right here, I've had this about a year. It's like maybe two, two weeks short of a year. This thing has been sitting here just like this, not hermetically sealed. There's actually a little air gap in here, um, which normally would contaminate it. And it's got kombucha that's been sitting here for a year, untouched. We haven't done anything with it. We haven't added anything to it. We haven't taken anything away from it. No mold, no contamination whatsoever. And this is one of the cool things. It's got a, it's got a skater disc under it. It's got one of my 10 inch skater discs under it. And so this is one of the nice things I found, particularly with brewing kombuchas and water kefirs. Now I brew them with the skater disc under them always. And they just don't go bad. If I get busy and I don't have time to um, bottle it when it should be bottled, yeah, it's gonna get sour. I mean, it's gonna get fully fermented and all the sugar is gonna go away and it's gonna be good and sour but it won't be contaminated. And so, uh, so there's just a little trick, a little tip for um, brewing kombuchas or um, other kinds of ferments. Um, and if, like I said, affected microorganisms ferments as well. Um, in doing some ferments, I also will use my powered rest shield device uh, and put them in proximity because we've also seen some really cool stuff uh, with ferments and with growing plants with those. It, it accelerates them uh, and prevents molds and blights and things like that. Uh, I also, when we grow sprouts, for example, I have a sprouting room, and when we grow sprouts, we have discs around the sprouting trays, and we also have a rest shield in that room as well, and we get much bigger, much healthier, stronger, more nutrient-dense sprouts that way as well. I just harvested a uh, few trays of wheatgrass and gave them to a friend of mine, and she was raving because she had been f juicing barley grass. And barley grass is usually not as sweet as wheatgrass to begin with, but even for wheatgrass, it was very sweet. And it's because the way we do things, I'm using ormus elements, I'm using monoatomic elements to foliar feed my sprouts if I'm growing them in trays. If they're growing outdoors, if I, whatever I'm growing in soil or hydroponically, we'll put it into the uh, root feed. Uh, as well as foliar feed them. But with sprouts in trays, since they've got very little time to establish themselves and they don't have, you know, 14 inches of soil to grow their root structure, they just get all knotted up in trays. And so you're not going to get as much nutrition that way normally. But if you're growing with ormus, uh, spraying like micro minerals, for example, uh, foliar feeding your sprouts and using skater discs and these skater devices like the rest shield, you get crazy growth, you get high nutrient levels, and the food tastes really good. That's the really nice thing is that when we grow whatever kind of sprouts, they taste nice and sweet and they taste really good. You can tell they got a lot of nutrition. So anyway, just um, one little tip with the skater disc. You know, I developed them for fermentation. People started doing all kinds of crazy stuff with them, uh, using them. Well, I, I think the first thing that I heard somebody do was to put it in the refrigerator. People started putting them in the refrigerators and found that the food in the refrigerator would last longer. And of course, we know from doing experiments that the discs will structure water homeopathically, meaning that it changes the bond angle of the H2O and makes it flatter, and makes the water more hydrating for one thing, but also homeopathically, it changes the water molecule clustering so that it clusters into patterns that will trigger a healing response in the body rather than a disease response. And that's uh, very important with water. That's one thing that everybody misses in the water purification business is the homeopathy of water. Homeopathy, homeopathy is not nonsense. It's clustering of the water molecules and it's been proven there are people like uh, Dr. Martin Chaplin, you can go online, just Google Martin Chaplin Water, and you can see his website um, at the Univers University of South Bank London proving how homeopathy works. 
and there are other people as well. Well, so anyway, um, people stick them in refrigerators. People are sleeping with them. They do improve sleep. They they basically de-stress any living organism. I put the big disc underneath the driver and passenger seat of my cars because I've noticed with them under there, especially on long trips, like 12, 14 hour trips, it radically reduces the uh, driver fatigue. Um, also when I travel on, uh, when I'm doing public speaking, if I've got to do an all day or sometimes like I'm coming up, I'm going to do a 20 hour talk in um, France, it's not 20 hours nonstop. <laughs> but it's two nine hour days and a two hour day. Um, and when I have my rest shield up on stage with me, at the end of a day of talking, talking, talking all day and then being bombarded with people all day with questions and stuff, I'm fine when I get done, I'm not tired. Uh, so that's one of the little benefits of these things. Um, body workers have also told us that uh, when they put these things in close proximity to their clients, when they're doing massage or Reiki or something like that, that it will balance the chakras and improve the results of the body work much more. Um, uh, what else? Meditation. Some people have said that it improves meditation for them. I know uh, in some instances I've gotten headaches where, um, you know, usually it's when I don't get enough sleep. It's like if I'm pushing it and I don't get enough sleep for a couple of days, I might get a headache. Um, and so, of course, I'll get hydrated and all that, but if the headache doesn't go away, I'll lay down with a skater disc underneath my pillow and most of the time it'll get rid of the headache. Uh, another little headache tip too, by the way, I found out another thing that works really well a lot of times for headaches is taking chlorine dioxide, also known as MMS or CDS. Um, what is it? Um, Master Miracle Supplement or... Ma uh, and chlor chlorine dioxide solution, MMS, CDS. Uh, you can get this stuff on kvlab.com, kvlab.com. Uh, but taking that as directed, putting about six, six cc's of CDS, the, the liquid chlorine dioxide, not the MMS, but the CDS, about six cc's of that in six ounces of lemonade. I find that works really well for taking away headaches and I believe it's because it floods the body with oxygen and when the oxygen goes to the brain, uh, it helps with the headaches. So anyway, I'm not one to get migraines and stuff like that, but I am one to push it too hard sometimes um, and you know, so occasionally that happens. So there's a couple little tricks for that. Um, there's so many other things that people use these discs for. Um, if I can remember, um, animals and pets for one thing. Um, people will put them in their dog beds or their cat beds. Cats and dogs like these things. They will gravitate toward these discs uh, and sleep with them. Um, and also, uh, as I mentioned, ferments, any kind of ferment. Um, it really enhances the nutrient levels. So uh, you can go to our website and you can see the other uses. We've got them all listed there. Sometimes people come up with new uses we didn't think of. Well, for example, like water structuring I mentioned, but one of the experiments you can do with these things if you want to see that it actually changes the structure of water is you can put um, some mineralized water like spring water uh, in a bowl or a dish or something on one of these discs and let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes or you can just take the whole thing, put the disc and the bowl in the refrigerator and let it freeze. And what you'll see is the crystallization pattern of the ice will be very different when it's sat on one of these skater discs than if not. Uh, and in fact, what we've seen is if you put it in some kind of a container like a, a jar or something that's got straight sides and you know maybe about the size of, let's say, a quart jar, like a mason jar, and you put some water in there on a skater disc, if it's got minerals in it, the skater energy coming off the disc will actually make the monoatomic elements in the water levitate. And when the water freezes, you'll see it actually climbing up the sides of the uh, jar. And it even, a lot of times, will create stalagmites that come up like little needles sticking up from the water as well. So a lot of interesting uh, uses for these things. Um, and if you find some use for them that we haven't listed on our website, please let us know because we're always um, you know, finding new and interesting ways to use these things. But like I said, for fermentation, they work great. And a little added bonus, you know, with the kombuchas or whatever, 
you can leave those ferments sitting. They may not taste fantastic uh, when they fully ferment, but at least they won't be ruined. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later.